I'm just so kick off of my brand new show. So, right now, join us, sit back, get some coffee, or you know, some drink, some beef, and go down this journey with us as we go back to the road. Also, son, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? We're going back to the road. We're going back down the road to the kingdom business. All right, let's return to the kingdom. Before we start the interview, I want to um, give the people a little bit of your history. How long have you been pastoring? How long have you been in leadership? And just tell the people a little bit about who you are. Okay, well. Let me start by saying I've been born again okay. since June 18th, 1980. Seemed like a long time ago. Were you born then? No. <laughs> it was like a good nine years. Later. Years. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been born again since 1980. And I accepted the call to ministry. I started out as a street evangelist. In 1984-85 and um, I started pastoring in the year of 2000 and I still shepherd although I've just installed I'm in my second pastorate but I installed a lead pastor here at Sanctuary of Living Waters yes which um, was founded in 2010 so now I am doing apostolic work now, and I'm, I'm going out helping to build up churches, structure churches, and, um, and whatever else God has for me to do. So I've been around for a little bit, pastoring, you would say, about 15 years. 15 years. 15 years. Yes. And, and where do you think you are now in your, in your life as far as being a pastor, an apostle, just a leader of the community in a whole? Well, at this point, I am, and, and I know exactly where I am now. Yes. I'm, I'm not guessing about it. My, um, my ministry is now to ministry leaders, okay, as yes. opposed to, you know, giving oversight to a particular flock. Um, I've been called, I just got back from Jacksonville to go help do some things, as you know, in 2014, I went to Africa mm -hmm. and helped to organize, um, it's called the Gospel Worker Support Network there, which now consists of about 12 churches. At that time, it was five. Yes. And um, so I'm really, the Lord has moved upon me now to just go help from my training, from my own experiences. I'm a PK, yes. so I watched my father all my life, and I'm not ashamed to say I'm 62, so as Hello. long as I could see. Say that again. I'll be 62 July 9th. July 9th. I love Yes, it. yes. You and don't I'm, look a day over 61. I'm, I'm glad to be alive, son. <laughs> I'm just glad to be alive and that still have awesome. the use and activity of my limbs and in my right yes. mind. But, um, so that's where God has me now, is just really helping. And there are a lot of young leaders mm -hmm. who are on the scene now, and I believe it is time for transition. I want to write, I'm looking for a co-author, um, because the <clears throat> transition of releasing the pastoral ministry to someone else, yes. I tell you, that was nobody but God. And it was a sweet transition. And for some, I won't say for all, but I think that there are some pastors who are up in age and we do a disservice by not releasing that next generation. Don't let it go. Yeah. Destiny. Yes. yeah, for yes. whatever reasons. And I mean, it may not be for everybody, but um, when there's no growth and, and how do you, how do you judge? And this the growth or the the life of a church yes if babies are born in the church mm. and if you have a church where there are no babies being born and I'm not talking souls 
Right. I'm not talking souls. I'm talking children. Physical if babies. Right. Yes. yes. Okay. Then, what's going to happen to the church when when the older folks start? If there's no new life coming in, it'll be church no more. It'll be nothing to do. No one to lead. No one to follow. Pretty so much, yes. and and then you know. So what happens to all of that? So I think that. Um, you know, those that have a pastoral uh, ministry right now, especially the aged, I had a very wise man say to me, um, as we were organizing, make sure you have a succession plan. And I began to really seek God about that. I began to write the plan if anything Explain happened that. to what me. Is, what is a succession plan? It means if anything should happen to me, mm -hmm. what's going to happen to the ministry? Okay. And that depends on how your ministry is organized. If it's democratic where you have a board who votes pastors in and out, yes. then that's handled. Yes. But but this particular ministry is autocratic. God gave me the vision, told me to begin the work. All right, and while I do have a board, they're more an advisory. It is God who gives us place. So to go back to what I was Sitting and I was thinking and writing as you know, I'm a paralegal by trade as well So, you know in time preparation. That's my thing making sure your house is in order your eyes are dotted your T's across yes. and While I was trying to develop the plan I got stuck and Then one day I had a a prophet to come in and visit and he says and I was feeling somewhat Overwhelmed because there was sh a shift that was happening in me from pastoral to apostolic mm. and um, And and the the prophet came in and he says you need to do the work of an apostle You've got all of these ministers around here Use them elevate them what have you? And I came in here in my office, this same office, and I sobbed before the Lord because I knew that's what I needed to do. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm like, but Lord, who can I, who can I entrust this with? Who do yeah. I give it to? And the Lord said, that's my business. That's my business. So I took no more thought. When he said that's his business, I'm getting, you're talking about road it. back to kingdom right. business. I'm going to let God handle his business. So two years later, um, I was not well all of 2016. I was not doing very well in my body, so I was absent quite a bit. And I have a, a young man that had been with me since 2011. Mm -hmm. And he's come from 13 years of armor bearing and all. And when I tell you, he just stepped up to the plate and, and you know, took charge in the ministry, reported activity to me, you know, didn't try to usurp me, even yeah. if it meant picking up the phone and calling me when I couldn't be here. Apostle, how do you want me to handle this? And this and, person is? Uh, Pastor Johnny Fox. Johnny Fox. Pastor Johnny yes. Gilbert Fox. Yes. Shout out to you, son. Yes, sir. And um, and he served me well. And a year later, mm -hmm. you know, the Lord said, start preparing him. So I gave him more specific assignments to do and what have you. And I remember when he came to me. And I asked them, as I do new members that come into the church, what's your, what's your assignment? What, what do you believe God has called you to do? And he said, he's called me to pastor, but he was mean. He was mean. I'm like, that might be your calling, but it ain't right now. Yeah. You know, it ain't right now. So over the course of time, I just walked. And then God said, church for the transition. Yes. Uh, the last Sunday in September. So he's been holding down the fort. The church is growing. It has a new 
flavor, yes. a new fervor, you know, that's his identity. Yes. And even though, you know, I'm overseer, apostle over the house, they doing their thing. And, and, he's, and he's not trying to do it like you did in a way. No, and I, and I don't expect him to. Correct. I don't expect him to. It's a new generation. And yet, I think why some pastors fear having any value but for wow. me just to sit with him on Mondays or Tuesdays and talk to him about what went on through the week and what I can share with him um, I'm I get joy out of that I I looked forward to the day Lamar that I could say go ahead baby preach yes from the side yes you know and now I'm at that place now I'm at that place that is where awesome. Um, and I don't even drop in every Sunday. I go and visit, and I tell him I'll see you when I see you. That is you know, awesome. so just let him do his thing. So let's. Business. We're going back on this road. We're on, we're on the road for for a lot of us. We're on the road, but but we're not on the right road mm -hmm. for some of us. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people that are doing kingdom ministry, that is doing kingdom business. There's a lot of us that is doing church business as well. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you first, what does kingdom, the word kingdom mean to you? Well, it means what it means. Yes. Okay, and it's rulership, it's, it's dominion, um, it, it has to do with, with rulership or governance of a realm, mm -hmm. of a territory. That's what it means. And when it relates to the church or us doing kingdom business, we've got to recognize who the king is. Wow. Okay? Yes, I like One that. thing I had to learn was it's not my ministry. Mm. I'm a servant of mm. the ministry of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I carry on the work of the Lord. Okay? So he's king over it. It's his domain, and we are subjects or servants of the kingdom, of his kingdom. The church, the church we know comes from the word ecclesia or called out ones. Yes. All right, we are the vessels. We are the vessels in the house that is going to make pathway or open up for the kingdom of God to be done here in the earth. He's still giving us, and, and when we become born again, and we become raised up um, in the body, my God, he restores to us what was lost in Adam. Yes. Okay? And so, now that we're in the kingdom, now that we're in the domain of God, now we can give access for his will to be done here in the earth, whether it's in the church house, the schoolhouse, the mall, the coffee shop, wherever we are, we can now usher in his rule and his reign by our yielding to him and letting his will be done first in our lives. And, and I love that because as a young adult, I've, I've been in the church all my life. I've been a part of ministry. I've been in outreach ministry. I know mm -hmm. what it is to go and feed the homeless. I know what it is to visit youth shelters and, and things of that nature, to go visit people in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And so I know what it is to do church, you know, mm -hmm. and, 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 and really, you know, have fellowship in the church. Mm -hmm. But I also know what it is to do kingdom work. Okay. And I learned later on down in life, I learned later on down in life, what the what the word church mean and and I and it as I got older I realized oh it's not the building it's not because I always thing. thought it was the building oh this church whenever you see it oh, that's church mm -hmm. no I'm the church we're the church right and so it changes right. the perspective of and this is the difference between um, when I say you know like what's like what's the difference between business because I like we need to get back on the road to kingdom business. Mm -hmm. So when people ask me, well what's the difference between kingdom business and church business? I would say mm -hmm. that church business is itself. Mm -hmm.
because I'm in church and I'm doing what I want to do. Well, I'm, 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 I'm involved in more of the activities mm -hmm. in the church mm -hmm. versus going out and doing what Jesus told me to do. Mm -hmm. Jesus said specifically, the last time you visited me, the last time you, when you, when you, when you, the last time you, the, you fed the, the, the hungry, mm -hmm. you clothed the naked, you fed the sick. When I was in jail, did you come see me? Like, when was the last, and, and, and the, the, the apostles, <coughs> when do we see you this way? When do, when do right. we see you hungry and then, right. and then feed? Do we right. see you? You say, that was you've done to the least of these. Mm -hmm. You've also done to me. Mm -hmm. Those were the mandates mm -hmm. that he gave. Mm -hmm. That's kingdom. That's ministry. Oh what you do in the church is good and it's <clears> great. <throat> but if you don't apply it and take it out, right. Right. then you right. missed the mark. Right. What you do in the fellowship. And we see, and, and that's what it is. We come together and, and we call it church or a church building. Correct. Okay, so we come, we come to fellowship with one another. We come for impartation. We come for instruction. Um, we come, and then we're sent out. So you're right. The church is not the building. We are the building. We are now the temple of the Holy Spirit, yes, yes. who lives in us. I love the Book of Acts. And if you want to get straightened out about what church is or what church should be doing, go back to Acts. Go back to where the church was birthed. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, and you had asked me a question before the interview, what is the state of the church? The state of the church is, it is alive and well. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus said that the gates of hell would not prevail. Yes. Now, there's a whole lot of things out there that identify themselves as That's being the church. The church. Ah. Okay, that may not necessarily mm -hmm. be. That's why you've got to go back to the beginning. Yeah. Okay? And, and see, is this what the church looks like? Is this what Jesus meant? So the church is alive and well. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And there's going to be a remnant. So what you're saying is, if we're seeing, if we're seeing uh, people or examples of people not doing what we know to be as church, then we shouldn't even focus on that. We focus on what the real issue is. We focus on what the, the people that are doing it the right way. We keep and our focus on what... Focus, focus, on. focus on what you are doing. Focus on what you are doing. What you, the okay. individual, is doing to expand the kingdom of God. Are you expanding darkness? Or are you expanding the kingdom of light? Mm -hmm. Focus on you. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, and when we come together, it's the Lord. The Bible says that the Lord sets solitary in families. It's the Lord that gives you shepherds or brings you into a fold of other believers. And I think one of the other problems is, is we think that, you know, you can go to a mall and pick out a church. Wow. Okay? But not be led by the Spirit of God. When I became born again, I got saved in my house, 2460 Northwest 31st Avenue. I cried on, I cried unto the Lord and he heard my cry. He then told me where to go. Yes. Okay. But I think now the culture, the way things are now is we pick and choose churches like we pick what we want to go eating at a smorgasbord. Right. All right, and, and that's not, we've got to be led by the Spirit of God. There is a man or woman of God um, who, who the Lord has called a gift to perfect you for the work of ministry. And what is the work of ministry? It is going into the world, preaching the gospel, baptizing. All right, and and everything that we see that Jesus talked about the kingdom of God, you can look Matthew 5 through 7, you can go into Mark 16. He tells us what we're all supposed to be doing. And then when you go into Acts, we see them carrying out the mandate 
yes. that Jesus Christ gave. Start at Jerusalem, which is your home. Start with your family. All right, go to your neighbors, Judea. Go to Samaria, those that are outside, perhaps your workplace or what have you, and then to the uttermost parts of the world. We've been given our assignment, and that may include visiting the sick. Yes. Okay, going to the prisons or whatever. There, listen, and those of you that are watching, those of you that have been washed in the blood of the Jesus, and you call yourself a member of the body of Christ, this is the time to do the work of the evangelist. Yes. Preach the gospel on your job. Preach it on the bus, on the train, in the highway, the byway, because things are changing. Things are changing. Things are changing. We're, we're in a time now where we're seeing the beginnings of sorrows. Yes. People are leaving here. Mm -hmm. and, and we wonder, when I hear of someone's death, my first thought is, I wonder if they made it in. I wonder if they made it in. You know, our concern should be for the souls of men. Jesus came to seek and to save sinners. That's what our work is. Not sitting in a church. I love praying. I'm a prayer. I love fellowship. I love all of that. But the greatest joy I have is witnessing to somebody that's lost or discouraged, that's hopeless, you know, and, and they don't have a sense of direction. That's what brings me joy. And, and I, I, I really believe that that's what we're missing, to go out to the, and reach the least the lost and the left out. And yes. I truly believe it. I've, I've been saying this for a long time. As a Christian, as a, as a, I consider myself a disciple mm -hmm. because I consider myself a follower of Jesus. Yes. So even though I know from the denominational standpoint uh, or the religious standpoint in the word Christian, I, I more so like to use the word disciple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've, I've always said that. Jesus did not come for the saved. Mm -hmm. He didn't come for the ones, or he's not going to come for the ones, or he's not, we're not supposed to preach to or teach to the ones that already know Jesus. We're supposed to gather them together and, and say, come with me so that we can go and reach the ones that don't know Jesus. Mm -hmm. Come with me and let's, and, let's, and let's go out to those that, that may have heard about him, mm -hmm. but have not fully put their trust in him. Mm -hmm. And I realized mm -hmm. there are all of us that do believe or say we know him that still may need that confirmation every now and again. Yes. And that's the that's the you know the 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 the, the, the tug of war, the pull, and, and you know it's 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 really I've had in my in my young years, still young, so in this where I'm at now, still struggling. Mm-hmm. Whether or not I'm going to make it in, then I have my moments where I feel like I'm confident. And I know that, I, that I've accepted Jesus and I love him and I'm going to enter the mm -hmm. gates. And there's moments where I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't want to lay down because I'm going to die and I may not be where I want to be. You're still having that? I'm, Are I, you still going I've back had, and forth with that? I've had, and, and you know when it, when it happens? It happens in my most depressing state. Okay. So, okay. it's, so, it's, so it's more so of a mind thing okay. rather than Absolutely. whether then I'm, I'm not sure. It's, rather, okay. it's more so mind thing. It's, it's more so when I know that I'm doing everything I need to do or I'm on the right track and it's good. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, the adversary comes mm -hmm. and says, so you ain't doing enough. You ain't, you ain't really doing mm -hmm. anything. He ain't really pleased. And see, what well, we've got to understand the, the subtlety of the enemy mm -hmm. is to drive you. Mm -hmm. Okay? Jesus leads us. Wow. He doesn't drive us. So when that accuser comes up and says, you ain't doing enough and you need to do more and what have you. Well, Jesus said, I had, I was in a service one time and I was living in Palm Beach. My husband was commuting, commuting from Palm Beach to Fort Lauderdale, and we went up there on a particular assignment. Mm -hmm. And he was ready. The assignment was over, and he was ready to 
come back to Fort Lauderdale. And I kind of like being in part. I didn't want to come back to Fort Lauderdale. And so, um, you know, having had the discussion with the members yes. in the church and, and mostly the leadership team in the church, we had a prophet who visited frequently and he calls me up. He calls me up and he says, it's not time for you to go anywhere. Okay, it's not time for you to make this move. Well, the Lord had told me, get with my husband. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Agree with my husband. And then I had someone else to come and tell me, no, that ain't, it, it, it's not. See, the enemy will drive you to do something that is outside of the will of God. You're doing what you're supposed to I do not move ahead of God. Yes. Even if God appoints me a, an assignment to do, or an appointment, yes. just taking an appointment to meet with somebody, yes. initially I will take the appointment, block out the time, but then I go to God in prayer. Mm. And some people may say, well, you know, maybe you should check with God before you even make I can always cancel an appointment correct okay because I I want to know from God how do I serve this person so before they show up here in my office Lord what is it how do I serve them according to your will yes I'm not gonna let the enemy drive me for the love of money for popularity, yeah. for set, because he will drive you yeah. to keep going and keep doing and keep this and keep that. And when is your time spent with God? When is your quiet time? Mm. All right, and I guess maybe because I'm older, I'm, I'm at that place now where I love my quiet time. Yes. I, I love my peace. I was more energetic when I was a bit younger yes. and I made mistakes yes. because I didn't wait on God. I didn't seek first the kingdom of God, what his will was in that situation. So be careful. The word says that these things were written that we may know that we have eternal life. Yes. So it should never be a second guess. You know if you have eternal life. Now, could you still be struggling in some things? Yes. Of course. And God is a deliverer. Mm -hmm. God is a deliverer. God is a healer. He will give you everything that you need. But it's something you said, and I want to go to Hebrews 6 and 1. Because you, you made the statement that, um, you know, Jesus didn't come for those who were saved. He came to save. He came to okay. save. Okay. He came to seek out in order that he may save. And once we're saved, this is where um, the ministry gifts of the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher come in. To perfect the saints. Yes to do the work of ministry. So there is a teaching, there is a trial component before you even go out. Now I tell new babes in Christ, bring your family and friends. You know, you may not quite know how to communicate the gospel message, but just bring them, just invite. That's the first mode of, of evangelism we do. Child, come and go with me to church. Yes. You know, my church got it going on. That's our first mode of evangelism when we're coming into the faith. But then Hebrews 6, 1 says that when we've received that gospel message and we understand it, let us go forward then to mature teaching and leaving behind us the first lessons of the Christian message. We should not lay again the foundation of turning away from useless works and believing in God. In other words, there, there's more to just salvation. Wow. And that's when we get into the teaching and the modeling and the mentoring of doing this work of evangelism wow. where you can go out and preach the gospel to the poor 
you know, you can lay hands on the sick and they recover. Yes. You can cast out devils. Demons, There's yes. more Christians afraid of devils and demons. And, and, you know, it comes from a lack of teaching. Jesus has already defeated the enemy. Yes. And he has given us the same authority. So we have to go on to maturity. And, um, and then we're back on the road to kingdom business. Yes. Then we get to the business of the kingdom. So that's how we get back. That's it. You, you've got to, <clears throat> how did you get off the road? Because we started out in the kingdom. We did. How did we get? We did. How do we have to come back to the road? Because we're lured away. Yeah. Drawn away by our own lust, by the temptations that are, you know, out there. Um, the things that we take a lot of things for granted yeah. and we don't continue. You know. Now, it's very, very dear to me, especially with people of my generation, because... And your generation being... <laughs> we had a conversation. <laughs> we had a conversation. I was like, I don't think I'm a millennial. But she was like, you are a millennial because millennials are like from this to that. <laughs> And I said, okay, that's fine. And, but, but we're also considered Generation Y. Right. I always say, what that's that for? Why? What that's that for? I, youth? I, I, I ain't no youth, but it's, it's a you. young adult. I know some, some folks, I tell them something. Why? <laughs> <laughs> you and, know, go the put question, the glass yeah. over on that why? side. Why? Why? You know, yes. so that's that generation. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I do it all the time. Oh, why? why? Okay, why? so why? you're millennial. What's the point? <laughs> you know? But I always I always want to, especially within the, five, within the last five years, um, I think spiritually I've grown since my grandmother passed. She passed mm -hmm. on my birthday five years ago. So I was 23. Okay. And that changed because I was ready to give up everything. I was ready to leave ministry. I was ready to leave the church. I didn't want to sing. I didn't want to do plays. I didn't want to do nothing. It was it was damaging. Wow. Okay. Very very damaging. Okay. She was she lived with us in her last days. Okay. So that closeness. I was close with her as a child, but okay. that closeness as a young man was was you know mm -hmm. and to to wake up to the news. Mm -hmm. I couldn't okay. go to work. I couldn't. I, I was working with children at the time. I couldn't wow. work. I was I had to make phone calls for my mom and. There was a house, so I, it, I went to church, and it was it was I was being bum rushed by so many mm -hmm. thoughts and negativity, mm -hmm. and, and I was just like, I'm done. I'm, I'm over. I don't want to do this. I don't need this. I don't whatever. And, wow. and my attitude was that for a good year, for the first year. Wow. Okay. And the second year, I realized I uh, talking with God, I put it into a different perspective. It wasn't because I was I was sad. I was I was upset. I wasn't upset with God because I knew she was seventy four. She had mm -hmm. lived her life, mm -hmm. but I I did not want to deal with anything. Mm -hmm. And my family was was you know growing apart. Um, when you lose a matriarch, that's usually what happens. And so I I said, you know what? I can turn this around. And every year on my birthday, I made tributes to her. Because mm -hmm. I realized that she gave her life to Christ, okay. and so I, so I took it and I spent it. Since she didn't, she didn't die on my birthday. She was reborn. Uh, she was rebirthed okay. on my birthday. Okay. That's how I look at it now, okay. and it's been a part of my healing process. But as a young person, as a young adult, as a youth, you go to church. I've been, I've been at my church all my life, okay. so they know me. There's nothing that I can do that I can get away with. But when you're a new person and you're coming in, you're coming off the street or whatever have you, they, they're not taught that it's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. They're not, they're not told yeah. that you're going to have to fight even the more. Yeah. And, and I want to reach out to, to Facebook. If you have questions, if you have a response, please write them in. Down the 
comment box below because we want to hear from you as well. Okay. But we, we're not taught mm-hmm. that it's hard, that it's, it's not going to be easy because, you know, the enemy is going to come in, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And the one thing I was tell, telling you about, talking to you about earlier is that scripture in Isaiah 59 mm-hmm. that says when the enemy comes in like a flood, yes. the Lord will raise up a stand against mm-hmm. it. And, and I said, I was talking to my videographer and he was saying the calm was in the wrong place. Right. And I when said, what do you mean? When the enemy comes in. Calm. the enemy comes in. Calm. Yes. Calm. Like a flood. Yes. The Lord will raise up a stand. Yes, God. <laughs> and, I, and when he said it, I was like, oh, that makes so much sense because if you do it the other way, if you say when the enemy comes in like a flood, calm, mm-hmm. that's giving power to the enemy. Mm-hmm. He has none. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. He has none. He has none he that has we what we give him. What we don't get. Exactly. Right. He has what exactly. we give him access to. Um, exactly. It's what I'm, we're I'm not gonna, taught. Yeah. And I'm going to be transparent right here for a minute because I'm a preacher's kid, PK. Yes. And um and I got hooked on drugs at fourteen. From fourteen to twenty four years when I became wanted deliverance yes. throughout that process so I kept going to the church. I kept running back into the church, right back into my father's church. And and what happened was there was a failure. And I'm going to say it's a failure because we miss opportunities to bring people in. I'm not going to go way out there because mm-hmm. I'm having some thoughts right now. But the failure was nobody could no one understood my condition yeah so all i heard was don't do this don't do that you can't do this pull this off pull that up cover this up you know all i heard was law Mm -hmm. and i didn't hear the message of grace and i'm gonna tell you who i heard the message of grace from was from um, Jan Crouch. Yes. On Praise the Lord yes. with her red hair. Yes. And I just happened on that program one night sitting in my house, strung out, and she talked about the grace of God. Yes. And that the burden wasn't on me. So I went to the scripture, Ephesians 2 8 and 9, for by grace are ye saved through faith Mm -hmm. it is the gift of god not of works all i heard was works and law works and law works and law i tried to quit you know doing the drugs i tried to quit smoking cigarettes i tried to quit on my own and it never lasted yes i would go a day or two or what have you it never lasted But the moment I heard her share that message on grace, that if I just gave myself to the Lord, verse 10 says, for you are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. So you know what? When I got to that place of suicide and wanting to take my life and and all of that, and and God used my six-year-old son to get my attention. Wow. He used my six-year-old son to say, Mommy, why are you crying? Mm. And I said to God, If you are real, help me. That was it. I didn't know about no sinner's prayer or whatever. My, My statement to God was, If you are real, help me. And when I came to the scripture that, I'm his workmanship, that took the burden off of me. Now that I'm your workmanship, God, work on me. Remove the taste of drugs and alcohol. Remove the desires for nicotine. Remove the desires to party in the club. I'm your workmanship, you did it. 
I remember the very last time I smoked marijuana that what the Lord took away because I ended up going into the hospital 10 days mm -hmm. and when I came out the hospital I didn't see like I saw when I went in Wow. I looked at my hand. You know how you sing the song? You look at your hands, your yes. hands look new, you look at your feet. I called my mother. I said, my hands look brand new. Wow. I looked at my, my feet look brand new. Wow. I noticed the blue sky. Wow. The green trees. I heard the bird. When you're in darkness, yes. you don't recognize any. That was the first thing I recognized coming out of the hospital. I still smoked marijuana. The, the cocaine was gone. I no longer had a desire for the cocaine and the speed. But I was smoking marijuana, and I remember going to a party with my husband. And we're riding in the car. we smoking our weed. And I turned to him and said, no forethought. It just came up out of me. This is my last time smoking this. And the taste was gone. I remember going to bed with a cigarette. This was uh, months later. My brother came and visited me from New York. And, and he learned that I had become born again and all. And he says, Helen, he says, I see such a change in you. He says, but every time you inhale one of those cigarettes, you're blowing smoke in the Holy Spirit's mm. face. That thing so offended me, Lamar that I did not want to do anything that offended the Holy Ghost. Right. Okay? Yes. I put that suit Though I had never smoked, and to this day, I have not held another cigarette in my hand. Now, how long so, has it been? Oof, I got saved at 24. I'm 62. That yeah. long. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah, long. That long. No drink. No more weed. We, we had weed. You know, we had weed. I was ready to get rid of it. I thought about giving it to somebody. The Lord said, no, you don't give that. I flushed it. Mm. Hundreds of dollars worth of weed. Because we become his on. workmanship. Yeah. Yeah. He does the work. So you know what? I can't brag and say, oh, I quit smoking back in, in two, uh, 19, whatever it was, 1981. I quit smoking or I quit whore hopping. Or I couldn't say that. He did that. Yes. He gets the glory yes. for that. Because you couldn't have done it on your own. Tried yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah. in the church, we have young people that are coming in, and there's no ministry for them. There's no ministry to walk them. And we've got a generation of kids. I remember starting ministry. I have five sons, and at one time I had all five sons in the house, and so I always had a house full of kids. Mm. And one day the Lord says, I want you to start Bible study with these kids in the neighborhood. There was an eight and nine year old who had already been introduced to smoking marijuana. Eight and nine? Eight and nine years old by an uncle, by an older uncle. But here's my point. Some of those kids that were there had never heard about Jesus. This wow. is in 19, say, 87 to 90. Mm. Had never heard about, did not know who Jesus was. And I thought that that was pretty strange. But if you have a generation that does not know God, and, and I came at the end of that, baby boomer generation, yes. that rebellious generation, then you got what they call the silent generation after that. Nobody talked about God. So I say we've done a disservice. When I got saved during that time, we were churching. We yeah. were popping. We were churching. But the evangelism and the programs within the church to deal with drug addicts, to deal with HIV and AIDS. This is just coming out the last 10 or 15 years. We were silent to that. Yeah. And so now you have young folks that just wander. They don't want to have anything to do with the church. They'll, um, they'll create who their God is and they'll serve him however they see fit.
you know, and not according to the word. So we've got to go back. We're praying for revival. We're praying for revival. We're praying for evangelism right now. That God would raise up laborers who will come out of the walls and take it to the streets and the highways and the byways. Otherwise, if the Lord spares me another 10 or 15 years, I would be quite worried about what's left here and how I would be treated because there's a people that don't don't love God. Yeah. Now let's talk about social media. Okay. Let's talk about social media <laughs> because this is the area that we're in now. Mm -hmm. Social media. And I want to know your honest opinion because you are on Facebook. You are active when you need to be active. Mm -hmm. Followers. I follow you, Mama. I do. <laughs> but do you think, do you think that social media is a cancer in the church? With the whole going live on Facebook or the video and as a whole, do you think it's a cancer? Okay. Do you think, what are the pros and cons of it? Okay. Social media is a tool. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a tool. Any tool can promote good or evil. Okay. All right. It can promote good and evil. Um, in our services, there may be times that I tell, or when I was pastoring, that I would tell people to put their phones away. Yes. Okay. Now you got a generation, they don't even carry a Bible anymore. It's all in so the phone. So it's phones. all on the phone. Yes. So, but I don't allow live recording when i was pastoring i don't want anybody record because you and i do live i just we just had a conference here and last mm -hmm. night i i did live it can be a distraction yes, okay. it is a distraction yes, okay. now when i've been shut in you know i'm glad to go live and see there's some church services going on mm -hmm. you know but it's still a distraction and it's a big time distraction when you look at the roots i deal with roots of anything when you deal with the roots of social media social media was designed by the elite to be a distraction mm. and so i don't care if you're in the church or out the church Folks are distracted, and while they're distracted, the enemy is gaining ground. Mm -hmm. So in the church, yes, can it be a vital tool used for, it can be a tool and it can be, but anything in excess, you know, there's some people that are on here and it's just too much. Mm -hmm. It's just too much. And so, you know, people wake up. It, it's so much I could say about this. And I've started a newsletter called The Informed Warrior. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be sharing about the dangers of cell phone really? and 5G and what is on the agenda. Yes. How many of you on Facebook, the first thing you do in the morning when you get up is you pick up your phone and you hit up Facebook? I know I do. You do? You do? I know I do. It's the first thing you do? The first, no, well, no, I won't say the first thing. Not not Facebook. First well, thing I do is I, I would check my phone. You'll pick up your phone for messages. Not, yeah, because somebody will call into that. Mm -hmm. But Facebook, mm -hmm. no. It won't, be, it won't be the first thing I do. But yeah, it is It is a... Saints spend more time on social media than they do in the Word of God and prayer. I agree. That's where it becomes a problem. Too much truth for you? I agree, no. <laughs> I agree. And I think they would. Okay. I, I think they would. I, I really do because I, I believe that what we're getting now is real transparency we're getting we're getting um truth and we're getting realness we're getting openness or fake 
it could be the or you were hit in the balance. It could be because you got people out there that are perpetrating frauds in, mm -hmm. in every type of thing. So it ain't you have people that this is an avenue that they can hide behind a phone and get stuff off their chest. But then on the other side, you got a lot of fake stuff going on here too. Oh, there's a lot of uh, what was called the catfishing and the whole lot. Yes, of, there's, there's a whole lot of it going on. But what we're getting now is transparency. This right here. This is transparency. This is realness. This and is you may not get it nowhere else but the Lamar show. How about that? But, I'll be too this. <laughs> but it's but it's a good thing because the one thing I want for my viewers or listeners or whoever, whomever supporters of this to get from what I do is it will always be truth. Amen. Probably won't always be my Let truth. Let me high five you on that because my newsletter is called the Truth Report. Yes. Truth. Truth. Truth makes you free. It makes you free. Okay. And, and we like to say it sets you free. It sets you free. Scripture yes. says it makes the you truth, free. You shall know the truth. And the truth that you know and make application of will make you free. It, it makes things so much easier. Yes. It makes things so much easier for everyone. If we could just be, I, and, I'm, and I'm, a, I'm a person that I don't get embarrassed easily. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes it takes something where it's like, okay, calm down. It's gonna be okay to embarrass me. Of course, my mother, she, you know, whatever. But and, and I don't get ashamed. Mama can embarrass. Mama you. can embarrass no, me. Okay. She can. <laughs> but I don't get ashamed. Okay. I don't. I don't get ashamed. Um, Unless again, I'm in my quiet time and my mind is racing, and I'm ashamed mm -hmm. within myself. Mm -hmm. But other people shaming me, I don't get ashamed. Yeah, yeah. I I can I can handle. I was talking to someone yesterday, a good brother of mine, and um, he's no longer in the faith, but he'll tell you the Bible just like he was. Mm -hmm. So, but I was I was talking to him, and I was like, I can handle people coming to me and scolding me, rebuking me. Mm -hmm. It's the way you do it. Right. I right. said, you have to understand who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. Jesus spoke to the Samaritan woman. Jesus spoke mm -hmm. to the people that followed him. Mm -hmm. To the people that followed him in a very clear, simple, precise way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It wasn't loud. Mm -hmm. It wasn't angry. It wasn't you know boastful. It was. It was simple. When he when he talked to them, he said, "Where is your husband?" Mm -hmm. Oh shit! Yes. No, 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 not that. I'm talking about yes. your husband. <laughs> yes, the, the one that yes. belongs to you. And 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 that was it. There was no outing of her business. Right, right, right. There was there was no extraness. It was it was it was simple. Mm -hmm. With Lazarus. He did what he had to do. People, why, why didn't? Why, why won't you do it now? Listen, he's right. not dead. He's sleeping. Right. Right. He's sleeping. Mm -hmm. But in all things, he did on his timing mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. his timing is perfect. Mm -hmm. Then he said, "You know." Yeah. Um, you have now where it's the personality. Of right. Because since there's been a shift in my ministry, see, from a pastoral place, you're more compassionate and caring and what have you. Yes. Brother Lamar, I noticed a shift mm -hmm. when, when that apostolic mantle has been put on me. There's a shift. My tolerance is not what it used to be under Very that much so. Very much so. And so I have to guard. I have to guard. Let me tell you, you can control yourself. Very much so. You can't be putting, well, it's the Holy Ghost made me do that. No, there are times I have to just wait to speak mm. because of the individual that I have to speak to. See, there are some that are close to me, and they know I mean business, I mean business. You know, I'm going to say it, that's it. 
don't ask me no questions. You know, there are those who know me and I know them. So they'll know, okay, pastor got something on her mind because sometimes it's not intentional. It's not intentional. And they know, I've had to explain to them, sometime I can walk through here and even though I know you're there, I don't see you. Right. So if I don't speak, it's not intentional. It's just that something is going on, and when the Holy Ghost give you leave, then come knock on my door. And what you get so offended in this. So easily offended. And the enemy will use of the fold of drifting. If. fellowship as a local body with these people I don't have to go to church mm -hmm. you know I don't have to go to church to be a member of the kingdom or whatever then uh, why does the word say do not forsake to assemble yourselves uh, mm. why did Jesus or, or through the epistles the writings of the apostles why does it say that he will get or old testament that he will give you shepherds after your heart yeah. or um to those shepherds be careful how you care for the flock of god if there's no assembly mm. we're not a bot you're not a pinky sitting over there somewhere you're attached to the hand that's mm. attached to the arm that's attached to the body so there's got to be fellowship that ain't God to isolate you and say you don't need to, quote, go to church. So to your point, know. individually, I'm the church. You're the church, but I can't be the church by myself. No, you're, you're a I member. You're a member in particular. I like it. Let me help some of you saints out there. Hallelujah. Your pastor, your pastor, and I'm talking from the pastoral perspective. Yes. And especially if you're not in a humongous mega church. Okay, your pastor relies upon you being there. You bring encouragement to your pastor. And I know our time is almost up. All <laughs> right, you bring encouragement to your pastor by your presence. Pastors need encouragement, too. Pastors do need encouragement. P pastors... Mm. And their families. Yes, and, and, I, and I never understood that. Until now. That is important to pray. Because if you don't pray for your leaders... Yes. If you don't pray for the head, the body will diminish. Yes. And it will, it will, it will flourish. And, and it's so important. It's so important. And I will be the one to tell you to pray for your leaders, to pray for your sub-leaders, the ones that are under your leader, mm -hmm. to pray for That's the body. Right. That's right. Because the head, the head is, is, is the head for a reason, but everything that's attached to everything else works in itself. Uh, yes, Lord. Yes, and so Lord. my hand can't function without the whole connection Come of the arm. Now. It just can't. Come on. Come on. And it can't function without the whole connection to this up here. That's it. The body has to work itself out. out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just have to. I can't walk mm -hmm. without my legs being attached to my feet. Yes, you are. Yes, and so you we are. want to we want to do this in the way of the road back to kingdom business. Jesus. I'm gonna let you end it out. But again, the point is that we do not church church is great. The fellowship is is is, is the point it. of church mm -hmm. if we don't go out from what we're being taught and go out into the world and evangelize then we're just a cult ah. we're just sitting in the room mm. and gaining all the information and not applying it yes we're not going to our brother we're yes. not going to our sister so we're using it for stale. ourselves it becomes mm -hmm. stale mm -hmm. it becomes stagnant mm -hmm. you ever you ever in, in the cold, like if you've been somewhere real cold, and I don't want to be messy, but if you spit, it's real cold, it's going to stick right in the air. That's 
that's what we do. That's what we do. It ain't, it ain't going nowhere. You ain't going to grass. It ain't going to, it's, it's going to stick right in the air. We don't want to stick in the air. We want to be able to be used wherever we go. Amen. Jesus Amen. goes with us everywhere we go. Amen. And so we can use him. I, I've seen pastors go in the strip club. There's no problem with that. If he's applying the word of God in the strip club, he saves the people there. Now, if he's, if, if he's, you know, <laughs> in the midst of it and trying to be, if he's trying to, like Going you say, conform in the strip club. club. Now, work it in the parking lot. Work it in the parking lot? Okay. We'll work it in the parking lot. <laughs> Pause and say, work it in. Don't go in. Don't go in. Work it in. You might be snared going in. Work it You're in the right. parking lot. Just got me in the, in the facility in, in, the, in the front. Now I give you permission to be a parking <laughs> lot prophet. Okay, <laughs> tell them to come out from a month. And but don't be seven. afraid to go to those places yeah. and meet them where they are. Be led. you got to be led to go into the places of darkness. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't need to be going Everybody in the dark. Got it. Okay, everybody don't need to be going in the dark. I, I was in the dark. Everybody don't need to be coming in the dark. Um, I want to say this. I know you're going to close. Yes. Those of you that are watching and you do not have a place of spiritual fellowship, there is a storm that is on the horizon there is safety in the ark ask holy spirit mm -hmm. to lead you to a ministry for cover mm -hmm. you need cover in the storm we we, we don't go out and just you know avail ourselves mm -hmm. to stormy weather we take cover there is a spiritual storm that is on the horizon and you need to take cover. God will lead you because he said he would give you shepherds after his own heart. All right, those of you that are prodigals, it's time to go home. Mm -hmm. It is time to go home. Get your grip or leave your grip. Your daddy got a new garment for you, and yeah. there's a meal for you. Yes. Get your stuff. Get pick yourself up and go home. We used to say it's getting late in the evening, and the sun is going down. All right. So with all my heart, that that's what I want to leave Lamar. Okay. You gotta come back to the kingdom. There are those who were left out. The Bible tells us that there are many kinds who are going to be left out. And I don't want you left out. So please come home. Find a place of cover. And when Jesus come or when he calls, we won't be ashamed at his appearing. God bless you. I love you, son. Thank you. Thank you. You love us. Yes. This is crazy. I hope you enjoyed it. This camera stuff. Yeah, you this know, is the first. Food. This you, is not the first. Food. You made it real easy. Thank you. You made it real easy to do this, and and I just I pray, pray that we die. and we have prayed. Yes. That um <clears throat> there will be some fruit that comes out of this, and to our handsome yes, videographer sir. and cameraman yeah, over right. there. Yeah right. Yeah right. He's yeah he's, he's Mister Mister what I call you Michael Michael Bivens that's what I call you. Do like Michael Bivens, Did you get comments or anything? Do we get comments? We got Can you no, tell? Okay. no, no questions. But the great thing about it is, they will watch later on and probably have questions, and then I will tag you in okay. so you can ask your questions. Good. So this has been the very first episode of the Lamar Show. Thank you. Can you pray us out? Yes, Lord Father, we just thank you. For this opportunity and this platform to exalt you. You are God and beside you there is no other. Yes. And no man comes to the Father except through your Son, Jesus Christ. So we pray, Father, that 
this dialogue that we've had, we pray, we believe that you've been lifted up, and we just ask you now to draw men unto yourself. Bless Brother Lamar in his endeavor, God, to disseminate the truth. We pray for every future endeavor that he has, God, that you will bless him and use him for a time such as this. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name, amen. 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 Thank you, Mama, for being you. on. Thank you for watching. This is Lamar Walden of The Lamar Show. That's it.